And Jonathan Ofean Sa, who is a, an Africa analyst and founder at Africa Briefing Magazine, he joins us now live from London. Welcome to the program. Um, I just want to pick up on what uh, Momen Almaki was saying there that it seems that the RSF is winning. What does that do to the overall fighting right now? Well, um, it's, it doesn't do much because um, the, the the National Army, you know, has a superior air power. For us, the RSF, you know, has a, it appears they have a, more troops on the ground and they have embedded themselves into the urban neighborhoods. So that actually gives them an advantage. So should the, um, the, the, the National Army, you know, try to use their air power to flush them out, they are bound to be some collateral damage. And by collateral damage, I mean a lot of civilian, uh, civilian casualties. So that sort of gives them uh, the RSF at edge. And again, uh, last um, Saturday or Sunday, they captured the Central um, Police Reserve uh, Depot and, and, and just uh, raided their, uh, their arms and, and vehicles and all that. So right now, the RSF have an edge, but it does not signal an early such an early end to the conflict. On M2. So um, do you envisage at all a, a full state collapse if things continue the way they are? Obviously, yes. If this, uh, I mean, uh, the war, you know, escalates, yes. I mean, uh, the, the country is about to collapse because uh, already the conflict is, uh, is spreading to other parts of the country. I mean, uh, you, you, uh, your reporter mentioned that uh, Western Darfur, where again the RSF appear to have the other hand, and then spreading north of uh, Khartoum and you know, good to Omdurman and, and other parts of the country. So um, it is bound, if it doesn't stop now, it is bound to spread, and that will spell, you know, collapse or maybe even anarchy for the country. Jonathan, who, who's there to stop that possibility? Because it's, it seems, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, that the US and also Saudi Arabia have maybe thrown in the towel when it comes to, to peace talks. Is that right? It appears they have, the two countries have thrown the towel. But then, look, all hope is not lost because uh, both sides are backed by, uh, that, look, um, the UAE, you know, backs the RSF and also it's, it's a bit partial towards uh, the national army. So we have the UAE, we have, the, we have Saudi Arabia, we have Egypt, and also we have, the, uh, the IGAD, the regional body IGAD, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, intergovernmental body or the uh, intergovernmental authority on development. And also we have uh, the AU. So what needs to be done is a concerted effort, you know, by all these bodies, IGAD, um, um, uh, the AU, the USA, Saudi Arabia, and um, Egypt, and, uh, and the UAE. To come together and because they have uh, the the, uh, the UAE in, in particular has a lot of influence over the RSF. So if all these bodies come together, these countries and bodies come together, I believe uh, they can exert some influence, you know, and they also offer some incentives to both generals, you know, to seize uh, hostilities and and try and, and and lay the groundwork for a return to democracy. All right, Jonathan, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much. Jonathan Ofe Ansa speaking to us from London. Really appreciate your insight and your time today. Thank you.